What a week, what a week it has been, not just for the Call of Duty scene, but for the entire world, as everything from schools to professional sports leagues have all been canceled or put on hold due to COVID-19, the pandemic that is COVID-19. Today on our launch episode, we'll be talking on how COVID has in fact affected the future of the CDL, which teams to look out for heading into the newly announced online league, as well as FaZe's unforeseen loss at CDL Los Angeles. All that and more ahead on Off the Break. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Off the Break. I'm Landon Lando Sanders, and welcome inside the Frontier Communication Studio from Dallas, Texas. We welcome you inside the studio, wishing you all health and safety during this time. Now, getting straight into things, I want to rewind the clock back a little bit to the Los Angeles homestand, because coming into this new online atmosphere, it provides a lot of new discussion, right? That discussion comes from what took place at CDL LA. And one of the biggest tales to look out for heading into the newly announced online league is where Phases headspace is right now. Because I believe that Atlanta's loss to Minnesota was the best thing that could have happened to them. Because I wanna keep in mind, FaZe leading up into their series versus Minnesota were 8-0 in series, 24-4 in maps, they had 3-0 teams in five out of their eight series, and they had 3-1 teams in two out of those eight series. The only one that had seen a game five leading up into their rematch versus Minnesota was versus the Rocker in Atlanta in a series that Minnesota should have closed out considering the fact that they were up, considering the fact that the ball was in their court. Now, I believe that near loss for FaZe definitely scared them, but it did not do enough to make them feel vulnerable because FaZe goes on, right, to win their home series, 3-0-ing Florida, doing the exact same thing when it comes down to, uh, to LA as well, 3-0-ing Florida again. But the near loss is simply all an afterthought at this point, right? It's completely in the rearview mirror at this point because, like I said, they head into LA and it is business as usual. Taking down Florida, like I said, 3-0. to zero. Taking down Dallas, 3-0. to zero. To finally face off against the team that caused them problems, the only team that has caused them problems up until this season the Minnesota Rocker. And we all know the story. For those that haven't got a chance to, it was an unbelievable series. I recommend you go back and watch it with two of what I believe to be the smartest teams in all of the CDL. It was a mind game of straight back and forth. You rotate, I rotate, you flip spawns, I flip spawns. We see an unbelievable end to a hard point and Minnesota manages to take the final two maps. Now, the reason why I focus so much on this series is because it finally made FaZe feel vulnerable, right? The Atlanta FaZe were shown that they are, in fact, human. Despite all the tweets and Reddit threads, all the tweets that I got saying, this team may be incapable of losing. This may be for the first time ever in Call of Duty history that a team kind of goes throughout the season and doesn't lose a single series. And what happens? They finally do. And you know what? I'm actually pretty happy about it. Why? Because after CDL Atlanta, there was no question who the best team in the world was. Heading into Atlanta, there was conversation, right? I mean, many people ranked Chicago very, very highly as we had yet to see FaZe in a full tournament setting. And what happened? Chicago came out and looked flat. Almost all event long. Right, They went game five, round 11 versus Toronto. That is pretty much a team that is not even close to being on the same level as them. They look shaky at times throughout a series, especially in hardpoint versus Minnesota, suffering the worst hardpoint loss yet in the CDL up to that point in game number one. They get reverse swept by Florida, which granted, Florida on the day looked great, but in the first two games, it was also very close and could have gone Florida's way as well. A few situations go differently, and that is a 5-0 for the Mutineers. You suffer what was rather, uh, you actually win the hardpoint game in game one by nine points. You win the search and destroy six rounds to four. And the losses that you suffer, right, the next three games, they weren't close. 40-point loss in the dump, 64-point loss in the hard point, a 6-2 in the search and destroy, 
especially considering that you looked like one of the best teams post London. And at that point, the comparisons, at least for me, were over. Chicago was part of getting reverse swept. Atlanta was part of reverse sweeping. The only team at that time that could even be compared to FaZe was Huntsman. And after Atlanta, there were no more questions. Everything that Atlanta had worked toward in the preseason was in some ways accomplished, right? Outside of what is going to be the world championship aspirations for the future, everything was accomplished and in record time. Be the best team considered in the game, check. To look consistent in all game modes, check. To have consistency across the team and individually, check. To be the most well-communicated team, check. And to win the first event they play at their home market, check. This team needed to be shaken up a little bit. And even though they've really only had problems with one team, I think for this particular group, it's enough. I do. I think this is, this is enough to light the fire again. It's enough for them to feel like they always have to cover their tracks because in interviews they had talked about it. Leading up into their rematch series versus Minnesota, guys like Ibizi, guys like Major Maniac were very conscious of the fact that, hey, we have to be aware of the teams that are hunting us down. And now they realize, like I said, that they're vulnerable because this is a team that I hope for the future doesn't get checked with egos. And I know that conversation is early. And there's a, there's a term that I'm getting ready to use that is far too early for them as well. But they're a young, mature core that has a great coaching staff. And I truly believe that they have a chance down the line, and be careful with this word, they have capability to be a dynasty. And now I don't use that term lightly. I think this is probably the only time that I have used this term for a team outside of what we've seen from obviously the Optic Dynasty, outside of what we saw from the Cole slash EG Dynasty. I truly believe that this team has the capability to maybe get there. I'm not saying they're there by any means, but this is the thing that is very, very important for me because of the ego checks that have happened early. At the start of the season, I said FaZe, they won the offseason because they're not only prepared for this year, they are prepared for next year, the year after that, and the year after that. For the next two, three, four seasons, these guys could technically stay together if they wanted to. They have a team that can be competitive and that can stay together long term. But for any lineup, they will at times run into, like every other team has, internal problems. And like every other dynasty has, not calling them a dynasty, but if they have aspirations of getting there, of which I think are possible, they're going to have to deal with this. Because how has every dynasty ended? It isn't because they, they start to fall off. It isn't because the skill isn't there. It's because of internal problems. It's because of struggles. Even talking about the Fariko Impact Dynasty, talk about the Optic Dynasty, talking about the Cole slash EG Dynasty, every single one of those ended because of internal problems. Now, this loss and losses throughout the season, I believe, are healthy for the Atlanta phase because it never allows for them to be comfortable. Now, I'm a basketball guy, and I'm not sure how familiar all of you may be with the 1992 Dream Team. But long story short, the 1992 Dream Team was an Olympic basketball team composed of some of the greatest players of all time. It's regarded as the greatest basketball team ever assembled. However, the problem that this team dealt with early was working together. I watched the documentaries. They talked about how the team would pass the ball too much. Some guys wouldn't pass the ball at all. Egos became a problem. People had to get checked when it came down to practice. And the legendary Coach Daly at practice decided when the U.S. men's Olympic team faced off against some of the best college players that he was going to throw the game. He did. The dream team lost. And it was bad. And it was embarrassing. And from that point on, the dream team knew, okay, we can be vulnerable. We have to work together. We aren't immortal, right? We have the ability to lose. We have the ability to lose at any moment. And when they went to the Olympics, they put on one of the most dominant performances in sports history. Now, again, let me be clear with this. I'm not saying the Atlanta phase of the dream team of Call of Duty, obviously, but the same aspect can apply, right? For a team that has all the ability in the world, all the capability in the world, losses for a team of this caliber and for a team this young is healthy, especially to light 
their fire. This is a team that now knows not only are they looking at teams in the rearview mirror, but those teams can gain on them and have the ability to pass them now heading into the online league. And again, I'm happy that they had a loss, especially before the online league takes place because fans and even FaZe themselves would have always put an asterisk over every loss that they'd have online. Because if a team comes in and say, hey, we haven't lost on land yet. They lose online, eh, doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. It's not even all that important because, hey, we talk about land. It's more important than online. These guys are still in some ways undefeated in my book. That's the way that it would have translated. 